Hey there and welcome back. In this video we will be looking at the level manager class. There's a few more things that we need to set up before we jump into the pawn class and actually getting the player set up. And one of the most important things in this game will be the level manager, so I want to get this one done as soon as possible. All this class will be is a simple actor class, so if we go to our blueprints we'll create an actor class and we'll call this one the BP underscore level manager. Okay, so if the new class created, we can go in and set up the first variables here. So in here, the important variables that we want to have are going to be, remember that this is going to be a lane-based movement, and we said that all of the logic for how and where the player can move will be in the level manager. So we need to consider things like the number of lanes that we have available, uh, the width or the distance which each lane will take up, and also the speed at which the level is moving. So if we get these simple variables made first of all, so the first new variable that we want is the number of lanes, and this will be a simple integer, so if we just head on over, change this to an integer. And what I want to do as well is uh, I'm going to come down and turn the eye on over here, but I'm going to leave that for now. Just for anyone who's new to the Unreal Engine, I want to show how and why we're setting things up in this way and how useful it can be to have some exposed variables. Uh, before that though, just need two more variables, so I'm going to press Ctrl W on this to copy this over, and I'll call the next one the Lane Width. With the lane width selected, I'm going to go over and we'll turn this to a float variable because this is going to just make it easier to grab later when the player class is referencing this. And we also want a level speed, which is another float, so we can control W to make a duplicate of this, and we'll call this one level speed. So that's the main variables created first of all. So if we hit compile and save this, what we want to do to begin with is drag the level manager into the level or the map, and then I'm just going to set the location to 0, 0, and 0 on all of the axes, and we can see that's going to appear down here. So what I wanted to point out, like I mentioned, if you're new to this, what we can see at the moment is none of the variables that we've made are currently visible. So if we go back to the BP underscore level manager, and we just want to activate the eye on all of these, which is just going to make this visible public to other classes, and it also means that if we hit compile and come back here, and we can see that all of these variables are now available in the details panel over here. So what we have are the number of lanes, the lane width, and the level speed. So this is going to be really helpful, is that we can change this before we hit play, and all of this will update. So it makes it very, very easy for us to access it, and change things and test different variables. So we can start by actually doing that. The number of lanes that I'm going to go for, I find that the odd number of lanes work really well. So I'm going to make this three lanes. The lane width, I've made about 250 because the cube that we'll be using is 100 units. So that kind of gives you uh, double the size of the cube to move plus a little bit for an offset. And then the level speed, I'm just going to set this to minus 500 because remember we want everything to be coming towards us. So we're going to give this a, a negative value and this will drag the level towards the player. So these are the main things that we want. Now, there's a few other things that we're going to expose, which will again just show a really nice way that we can make all of this very, very accessible and easy to update and iterate through. Okay, so the next two variables that we want are actually going to be uh, vector values. So just create a new variable. And the first one I'll call the out of bound box scale. We'll go straight over to this and we'll turn this into a vector. And what I want to do for the scale is once again, make this public and expose this by selecting the eye icon. And then we'll just copy this because we want the next one to be exposed to. And we'll call this one the out of bound box location. Okay, so have both of these made again, we can hit compile, just go back and make sure that they're appearing and we can see that they are over here. And the final thing I want to do with the variables, and this is going to be really useful if you've not seen this before, is that with the out of bound box location selected, we can go over to the right hand side and we can see we've got this option here to show 3D widget. So if we tick that and select the compile button, we can see we've actually got a new thing here and it's a little bit hard to see, uh, but we've got this 3D widget shape appearing. And what this will let us do is that as we select, if we can select this and move it around, we can see that we actually have control over the out of bound box location. So this gives us a kind of physical widget to drag around the world. And the way that we're gonna be using this is we're going to make our bounding checks. So the colliders, which will be checking for whether the floor tiles and obstacles have went out of the level, uh, we can quite simply drag and move this around and we'll link that to the location of the colliders. So again, for now, we're just gonna set this back to zero and we'll get to adding the collider. So back in the level manager, we're gonna go and add a new component and we'll make this the box collider. Okay, and we'll just call this one the level bounds. And what we want to do is we want to tie the variables of the level bounds directly to these vectors that we've made. Now, this isn't necessarily required because you can just 
uh, if we compile and update this, uh, we can see that just here, we do have the option to select the box itself. And we have all of the variables exposed here. So we can actually change this here as well as the location. Now, the only thing about this is that it can get a little bit annoying to need to click into uh, kind of sub components in an actor and also if you forget that you've done that and then you want to find other values on the level manager you have to keep going in and out and it seems like a, a really small thing but it can become quite frustrating and it definitely makes the process a bit longer so what we're going to do is we're going to expose the important variables just here right in the details panel which means we never need to click to a sub component and we're going to link this in the construction script which is always updated in the editor whenever you change something so we're going to see these changes made in real time so quite simply to link these up we want to control drag in the level bounds from the level bounds we want to set the box extent and we also want to set the world location okay so these are the two things that you just saw me affect in the editor and you're now going to see how we can do this by connecting these to the construction script so if we plug these in first of all and I've just gone ahead and tidied those up and sped that up in the video. Uh, what we're going to do next is we want to link the box extent to the bound box scale. And we're going to link the out of bounds box location to the new location here. We don't need to worry about changing any of these. So the update overlaps is going to be fine. And the sweep and teleport off is also fine. So we don't need to change anything else. Now, if we hit compile, we can go in and we can see that the box visualization that we had is actually gone because it's already updated that we've got the box scale down to zero. So what we had originally was 32, 32 and 32. So we now have the box scale back to where it was. I'm just going to put the location back to zero for the, the main actor as well. We can see that was on 20 on the location. And then, like I mentioned, if we can select our widgets, we can now drag the box around directly based on the location of the uh, the bounding box variable that we've created. So that means that all of this is being updated in the components down here in the uh, the hierarchy. But it, like I said, it just means that we don't need to click into this. It makes things a lot faster. And also when it comes to copying and pasting things in the world map, you can't copy and select the components and I found myself many many times in the past wondering why I'm trying to make a copy of something and I couldn't do it and trying to move it into the right place and it's because I, I forgot I had a component selected um, because it's a very simple thing to overlook so this is the reason we're just going to make this a little bit easier a little bit more streamlined and we now have everything important exposed in the level manager just here so in fact what I'm going to do to wrap this up is we're going to set the variables that we want for the bounding collider to be uh, what we need them in the final game so the bounding box scale I'm going to have something, we're going to make this nice and thin, so one on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we're going to give this a value of about 2,500, should work fine. This will just make sure that it covers the entire width of our play area. And we're going to make it a little bit taller as well. So we'll give it something like 400 on the z-axis. So this is just going to make sure that all of the platforms and obstacles are caught when they go past this collider. Now, the final thing is the box location. Just zero everything back out. And on the x-axis, this is going to be the transform that the obstacles are moving. Uh, we're going to make this minus 2,000. So 2,000 units back in the world, and that should be perfectly fine. So the player is going to be sat here. Everything is going to be scrolling towards the bounds. And then when it hits them, we'll, do the, we'll manage that logic a little bit later. Okay, and the final thing to wrap this up is I'm just going to go back into the BP underscore level manager. Just want to make sure that the collision is set to overlap or dynamic. This is the default setting anyway, but just in case changes are made in the future, just wanted to cover that. We don't want this to be set to block or anything. We don't want to physically stop or collide with any of the actors coming through here. We just want to overlap, find out that something's been there, and we're probably then going to move this back to the front of the world so that we can get a sense of uh, object pulling and reusing objects as well. So that's why this is going to be overlapping, not blocking, is that it just needs to, to trigger the event that something has touched it at least. Okay, so with that final change made, I'm going to leave that video here for today. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.